It's kind of... <laughs> It's kind of sad, I was going to do an in memoriam segment tonight, but I heart beat me to it three weeks ago. Growing up with a father like Charlie Monk, the mayor of Music Row, um, was definitely <laughs> filled with challenges. Um, I will tell you that his grandchildren were probably his greatest accomplishment, um, to be fair. He loved all of them. In fact, I think that is the biggest thing they all miss is his regular phone calls and texts from Poppy um, to check on them and find out about their current status in school and grades because he used to like to remind them that he had a 4.0 um, at one point. Um, that was the only semester he was ever really fully in school though, that he had a 4.0 and he likes to rub that in. So. Hi, my name is McKenna Monk, and I am Charlie's granddaughter, and my favorite memory with him, um, one of a thousand. So he was getting presented with the President's Award, I believe. He decided that it would be just the best theatrics of all time if I at the mere age of like 11, accepted for him as a surprise to the audience. And I'm saying my speech and I just remember watching, like seeing him from the corner of my eye, mouthing every single word of the speech because he had memorized it. I was thinking, so are, do you want to do the speech or do you want me to finish this? <laughs> Since he's passed, I've um, gotten to see a video of that and I, I never really thought to ask for it. I th think there just wasn't a need. And um, the hug at the end of the video is um, something that I will cherish forever because I don't know how many uh, hugs we have on video. Uh, so yeah. Mr. RJ and the CRB board, thanks for honoring the best grandpa in the whole world, Charlie Monk. My poppy. <laughs> Charlie Franklin Monk, the beloved mayor of Music Row, was born in October of 1938 in Geneva, Alabama. He grew up dirt poor, but he always had big dreams and fought hard to make something of himself. As co-founder of CRS more than 50 years ago, Charlie hosted the annual New Faces show for 40 years, opening with his signature, Let Us Pray. That show helped launch the careers of stars from George Strait, Reba McIntyre and Alabama, to Miranda Lambert, Tim McGraw, Faith Hill, Keith Urban, Taylor Swift, and countless others. Dolly Parton once said to Charlie, you truly are the definition of a music row storyteller. While he served on many boards, including Leadership Music, the CRB, NARIS, and NSAI, and also received honors including his induction into the Country Radio Hall of Fame and a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Tennessee Radio Hall of Fame, what made Charlie so special was how he cared about people. He loved his family and friends and rallied for songwriters and artists. Charlie's legacy is one of creativity, generosity, kindness, and encouragement. And many of us, like Miss Sherwood and myself, are here today because of Charlie's pioneering spirit and love of music. Now, let us pray. I was told that Paris Hilton wrote all the songs on her new album. Lon Hilton said that makes two reasons not to buy it. <laughs> I like that one. Immediately, if you ran into Charlie Monk, you, you would not you'd be taken aback by this, this charisma, this presence. And at the heart of it, Charlie was a truly, truly kind person who loved this city, loved the industry that we worked in, and loved the music that was produced by the industry. Talking about the magic in music, well, you programmers should look for the magic not in the format, but in the talent, like Jerry House. Think about that. Hi kids, uh, it's Jerry House. 
I met Charlie many, many years ago when uh, I was just a pipsqueak. Charlie introduced himself to me as the mayor of Music Row. And I was so naive, I believed it. I, I really thought, man, these people are organized. They incorporated two blocks and uh, Charlie got elected. And uh, years and years later, I, I asked him about that. I said, uh, I discovered you, you named yourself mayor of Music Row. Why didn't you make yourself emperor of Music Row? And he said, no, that's Sky Porchetta. So let me take you back to 1996, one of my more infamous CRSs. So I was senior vice president of promotion at MCA Records. And we always had such an envious position about RCA and the brilliant stroke of genius that Joe Galani had by creating the RCA boat on the General Jackson. And so when we found out that CRS was going downtown for the very first time for one night, I talked to my assistant, Royce Risser. Yes, Royce Risser. Yep, that was me. Scott's assistant, $15,000 a year, no benefits. Thanks a lot, Scotty. And I said, Royce, find out exactly where the General Jackson is going to dock downtown. So I got the whole promotion team together. We went down, stood on that spot, facing the river, turned around, and I'm like, okay, RCA's boat is going to get off at MCA's town. We rented the backs of those buildings. We had Vince Gill, George Strait, Reba McIntyre. We had a marching band that learned a song by George, Reba, Winona, Vince Gill. So night of, everything's together, everything's rocking, we're hiding in the bushes. Here comes the General Jackson, cue the band, starts playing, people coming off the boat, losing their minds. Everybody's partying, everybody got it. Mission accomplished. I got kicked out of CRS that year for pulling off this little stunt. They took my badge away. And so I was suddenly in CRS jail. And Charlie Monk, that next day, had, was part of this team that had free Scott buttons put together, and he's handing them out to people. And he pulls me aside and goes, look, I can't officially say anything, but thanks for shaking up those sons of bitches. Keep doing what you're doing. I got your back. And Charlie Monk always had my back. You might ask, how's the music business doing? Well, the music business is in tough shape, really tough shape. Nearly every part of the music business has witnessed some form of downsizing, except for Scott Borchetta's ego. By the way, do you know how many record executives that takes to screw in a light bulb? Ten. Well, actually one to screw the light bulb, the other nine to be in the picture. I first met Charlie Monk at a Grammy event. I introduced myself, he gave me a card, and he said, look, if I can ever do anything for you, let me know. Well, fast forward a few months later, I am charged with putting together a dinner for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So I picked up the phone, called him, Charlie Monk. So I gave him all the information, and he says, I'll call you back. Fast forward to the next day, my phone rings, and he says, I've got five tables on hold for you, and I'm working on three more. So I'm sitting in Charlie's office one day, and the accountant comes in, it's a lady, and she's like, Charlie, we are having to resend your expense account, your T&A report, because you turned in some reading glasses as a reimbursement, and we don't reimburse people for personal items. And Charlie said, but I was in here playing songs for Eddie Raven, and he put on my eyeglasses, and he walked out with them. She said, I'm sorry, we, we just don't. We just don't replace personal stuff. So she leaves the room. A week later, I'm in Charlie's office. She comes in to drop off Charlie some paperwork, and he goes, by the way, did you get my new expense report? And she said, I did. I haven't looked at it yet. And he said, well, I got a copy of it here. And he pulls out a copy and he hands it to her. And he said, you'll notice my reading glasses are on that T&E. And she looks at it. She goes, first of all, I've already told you that we don't reimburse for personal items. But she said, as I'm looking down this list, the reading glasses are not on this t &E report. And Charlie goes, oh, honey, they're on there. Your job is to find them. <laughs> Isn't that great? Like he had ramped something else up, you know? He'd taken the whole 
the family to lunch or something, you know, and, and, and put it on it. Your job is to find them. I was doing some research the other day for a story and called Royce Risser. I said, how many people really work at UMG? He said, about half of them. So uh, the first time I think I came across Charlie Monk, and this sounds almost cliche, but I believe it was just outside of the pick and parlor at CRS, probably 1992. Years later, I got a phone call from Charlie and he said, hey, can you come to my office over on Music Row? He proceeded to run through all of the jokes that he had for the New Faces show. The best part was he's, he would ask me, hey, who, who should I apply this, this roast to? So uh, on, for those, those series of years, I was able to give him some names of programmers or industry people to say oh, that'd be a perfect, a perfect person to rip, and um, I didn't have to suffer any of the consequences when I did it. So, the official meeting of the J.R. Schumann Fan Club will convene immediately following tonight's program. Please gather inside Elevator Four. No, that's too big. I first met Charlie Monk at my very first CRS. When I was asked to kind of talk about him, it, it's hard to, it's almost impossible to come up with a Charlie Monk story. Um, one thing I learned from Charlie Monk is uh, when there's an event in town, show up about 15 minutes early, talk to as many different people as you can, make your way to the back of the room. As Charlie would say, as soon as the event starts and everybody turns to face the stage, Hit the door. When you look at the secret sauce of what makes country music so special, and the city of Nashville so special, and Music Row so special, is exactly what Charlie Monk believed and what he lived and what he shared with all of us. And my last time with him was at the last uh, Country Music Hall of Fame induction. And I was so happy to see him because I got to spend about 15 minutes with him. And he goes, let me tell you something, son. He goes, getting old sucks. <laughs> he goes, my brain's all still here. I can still pretty much remember everything. He goes, but I can't walk up a damn stair. But I just want you to know I've always loved our relationship, and I'm so proud of you. So that always meant so much to me. Charlie, Charlie Monk being the legend that he was and is, it always felt like a, an extra hug coming from Charlie Monk. So, hug back to your brother. Charlie Monk means to me showing up. He means integrity. He taught me what it looked like to show up, and hopefully I can, I can be that to someone else as well. So, thank you, Charlie. The last thing I'll point out is there was no event during the years I've known Charlie, 38 years, there was no event more important to him than CRS and getting to get up and uh, do his thing that he worked on so uh, feverishly to make sure it was funny and real and that the room would get it was a highlight for him. So this is the appropriate place for people to tell the Charlie Monk story. He was always so encouraging uh, to me in my career. Um, he's just a, a, a sweet, sweet person. And um, I know he'll be missed certainly more by his family, but um, I'm gonna miss him. And uh, I know there's so many people here that uh, are here right now that are gonna miss him as well. He's a great, great man. And I will say that short of his family, uh, I don't think there's anything that Charlie Monk loved more than country music and country radio. Alabama, after, the, after Alabama, country music and country radio. I love you, Charlie, and I miss the hell out of you. I miss him so much, more than I can probably ever explain. Uh, he was my biggest cheerleader. He was the dad I never had. And he was my best friend. I love you, Poppy, and I miss you so much. To come to Music Grow, which has already changed so much, and now be down here without my father, it's a little tough, I'll admit. And I'm sure walking into Country Radio Seminar this year will be even tougher.
I think I have a better understanding of my father and country music because those two worlds collided.